constraints in any 3D application were born uh, ma uh, mainly for uh, all these mechanical things like connecting things, following things, having almost like a, like, a, like a clock that you can open it up and you see all the cogs and every single thing it's constrained to something. Maya has several constraints. We'll be touching on those ones that we use for animation. Although if you open the constraint uh, menu here, if you go constraint, you can find that menu under the animation module and then go constraint. Here you can tear, you can tear that menu off right there so you can have it handy. So you can see that it has that menu constraint, it has point constraint, aim constraint, orient constraint, scale, parent, and it has new ones. Uh, you can constrain things to geometry, normals, tangents, and even more as you can see down the list. Each one of those ones, what it's mainly doing, it is it is setting limits and it is making some sort of like uh, connection between one object and then one other item in the scene. Mainly we do those things with locators. So we can have, uh, remember locators are the ones that we use with bridging things between objects and it's mainly connection things. And as I mentioned before, all these things could be like very, very technical. In the old days it was just for manipulating things uh, in, in the way from a, from a programming point of view that if you move the sphere going up, the cube would follow, and things like those ones. But with animation, uh, we use them a lot for things that, let's say if I wanna grab the mouse like that, or if I wanna grab the pen like that, and then let it go, we will be constraining, and then releasing that constraint so the object uh, goes down. So let's just go through them slowly, and uh, paying close attention to what they do, because again, this could be very, very technical. The scene that I have open here, it only contains one sphere and a cube. Uh, so I will show you basic constraints. The first one would be point constraint. And the way that Maya works, it, it is that the way, the, the first item that you select, it is the target. And then the other item, it is going to be the source. And that could be really confusing because somebody else can say, you know, the first one you select is, is the source and then the other one could be the target. So the way that I see it is the, uh, the first one you select, it is the one that is going to be having all the control. So I am selecting the sphere now and then I select the cube and I click on the point constraint right here. And now the cube, it's actually, if I go to the wireframe here and maximize the viewport, the cube, it's actually inside that point. Uh, let me make it bigger so we can see it. Uh, even, even something like that. So if I move the sphere now, the cube is going to be following. Even though I am not grabbing the cube, it is following the sphere because it has a point constraint. Now the point, it actually means that it's going to the axis. So both axes now are aligned. You can't really see them, uh, but they're on the same position, if I grab the cube, you can see the axis is in the same position. I go to the sphere and it's in the same exact position. That, so that is the point constraint. Um, and if you go to the outliner here, you're gonna find that the cube now has the uh, expand icon there and it has the constraint that it's telling you, now I have a constraint. So that one, if you, if you want to let it go, you just grab it and then delete it like that. And then if you move the sphere again, that it was the, the, the item with all the control, now it's being let go. So this is one type of constraint. Let's go through the other ones. And slowly this would be sinking in. You would be understanding what's going on with these constraints. Let's try the aim constraint. Let's again, grab the one that you want to have controlling the other object. So grab the sphere then grab the cube and then click on the aim constraint right there. And what's happening now is that if you move it, now it is always aiming to that object. And again, it's always aiming to the axis. Constraints, so far these ones, they cannot see the geometry. It is always looking at the axis. 
and just by doing this you can actually see that um, this is how we rig the characters and then how we rig things inside the scenes uh, so we are automating some of the processes and the relationships between the objects so let me just let it go again I can go there to the outliner and then delete it and let's go to the next one grab the sphere and then grab the cube and then go to the scale sorry go to the orient uh, constraint right there so if I do this one now what's happening is that it's trying to grab the same numbers of the rotation right there so if I move it it's not doing anything it's not following it's not snapping it's only for the rotation right there and, and it is very handy as you can see you can have one object that maybe this one's off the screen nobody can see it and uh, let me just switch to this one so I can be able to manipulate that like that and just take it out and I can rotate the other object and then see the changes in this one so this one's been affected by the other one uh, so again it's really useful let me let it go again right there and uh, let's go for the um, scale constraint right there grab the sphere same idea go to the scale and now what's going to happen is that it is going to be following the values on the scale of the control object right there if you do it in just one axis goes like that if you do it in the other axis goes like that or you can grab them all which is pretty self-explanatory so far so go and delete it right there and then let's use the parent constraint parent constraint is actually a new constraint or, or a newer constraint that that came about you know uh, i would say maybe like four years ago the other ones are really old type of constraints they might be there you know since the 1990s you know maybe so the parent constraint is one constraint that is really useful again for animation um, i think we that's the one that we use the most and parent constraint what, it, what it's doing it is basically a uh, uh, an advanced uh, way of parenting things and remember if i go back to uh, the the parenting function if i say okay sphere you're going to be the parent of the cube so i grab the cube then go to the sphere press the p key and now this the uh, sphere it is controlling that and, and that is cool that is good you can see the hierarchy right there and you can bring this child closer and then you can go like that and it's always following if you rotate it, it's going to go like that always following what uh, what the parent is doing uh, the only downside to parenting like that is that you cannot let it go never ever ever so if you animate this one uh, and then you put it somewhere in, in in a specific position you want and then you go back to this one that position is going to change and now you're getting like oh please stay there but you can't do it because there's no option and you, you cannot really keyframe the parenting it's either on or it's off so now it's on and you can't do anything about it so that's why the uh, the parent constraint comes into place so let me go and un undo that hierarchy this one i can also open the other view so we can see it better if you like the other one better hyper graph keep it right there so now there's no hierarchy on this ones and uh, let's just bring it closer to the sphere right there and uh, i go now into the parent constraint so again grab the sphere first that is the one that is going to be controlling and then grab the other one right there and go parent now parent it is it is doing a couple of things it is it is by default it is constraining the translations and rotations so if i go like that it's doing the same thing as the parenting which is really cool the the main difference with this one is that if you grab now the child you can set it that releases the control right there so i can go and say this one that is one i can go and say zero and now this one does not have any influence or control over that so what's really cool with that is that you can keyframe that so let's just do a little test on that i can go and set one right here and uh, let's go down to the frame so this one frame one let's just do a, a, a quick animation right there set the keyframe go to frame 24 
and let's just move it like that as simple as that so we can see the uh, purpose of this constraint and then on frame let me actually do something here something more interesting let me just undo this something that makes more sense you can see these things hold on okay let me just set the scene i'm going to make the uh, sphere push the cube like that so just set it like this and go to frame one sorry go to frame one right there and go to frame 12 uh, sorry go all the way to 24 i'm thinking as i'm speaking so i'm changing my mind so let me just go there so now we have this is going like that on frame 24 let me bring the 24 over to the frame 12 so it goes through and then frame 24 maybe just goes somewhere uh, here again and what it's doing it is going through i want that to be pushed that cube to be pushed and then go back so i can constrain and animate that constraint so now let's go to the cube here and then set keyframes it was one i can copy those keyframes so it was one 12 and 24 so i'll do the same keyframes so one here 12 right there and then 24 just for me to know so if i go frame by frame and i see that the first frame that this is making contact i can i can actually keyframe it right there and I, I will be keyframing that constraint so here in frame four let's see frame five grab the sphere grab the cube and then constrain it so it'll be parent constraint to that right there and then go to the uh, keyframe right here and then keyframe it so now this is this is always following as you can see now it's following so in the frame before i want to turn that off so it stays right there and then keyframe it so now what's happening here is that it reaches that point and then it pushes the cube right there so now you can see how this is handy and then let's just zoom out and release that constraint somewhere when the sphere it is actually going back so that would be frame 14 so let's do that let's keyframe this and uh, make sure that i'm keyframing the constraint right there frame 15 let it go right here keyframe it and then release the cube and then leave it on that same place now the the this is a basic example when you have things that we're grabbing objects that is really really handy we can turn it on we grab the object and then we say ah, there you are and then you throw it and you release the constraint and that's how we use it it is it is i would say like pretty much and maybe like 99 percent of animation animators doing that would be for grabbing things grabbing to something that i that i go to the desk and i go like this constraint on and go like what do you mean and then oh that's what you mean let go of the constraint and let go of that um and again it is mainly for animation but all the constraints have been created for technical technical things now the other ones i'm not going to go through those ones uh, it's mainly uh, because they're super technical and uh, they all do the same thing uh, for instance the geometry one it, it snaps to the actual surface of the geometry so it just goes like like that uh, normal one the um, I don't know if you know but there's there's one thing that's called normals in any 3d applications so if I go to the object and uh, I go to the uh, display let's see mesh display and I can go and say display normals right here you're gonna see that it has like little hairs right there and if I get a sphere that has more let me just get something more dense right here you see how many faces this one has and if I do the same thing these ones are the normals which is basically a mathematical thing that is telling the computer that those polygons are facing either out or in so the computer would not be calculating as much that's the point so the normal constraint would, would be attaching things to those normals and in tangents would be you know just touching the surface and uh, so on you can do a lot more with these ones but the main ones for animation are from point 
all the way down to parent and out of these five parent constraint we use that a lot like a lot would be like easily like like once a week okay let me just go back and reset the scene and open a scene that i have here for you and you will watch me animating this one a little bit and uh, turning that constraint on and off as well and, and this you know this example is actually what we do once a week there's always something that we're holding on to or there's all there's always something that we need to grab every single time every single scene seems to be like that and it's kind of complicated because let's say it's not a it's not an, a beginner scene but when you get scenes like just acting shots you would be like yeah how's it going and the hands are always like that but when you get scenes like well you hold on to something you grab the computer screen you need constraints you need eye case you need you need a, uh, to set up the scene in a different way so constraints are there so like this scene i'm just going to animate that hand just grabbing the other hand just like that <laughs> as easy as that so let's just keep it really simple let's make this um, uh, for now 12 frames if we need more frames we'll add more frames so for now let's go and do this frame one it's gonna stay like that frame four i'll have my anticipation frame 12 i'm gonna go all the way through like that so this is my my animation tweet took like that as, as simple as that and I need to turn on the constraint and then he's gonna grab this the, uh, the sphere so make sure that on the frame that is making contact this is a way to do it on that frame you need to position the hand in a or the sphere in a, in a way that it is gonna be final because if it doesn't work you cannot really reposition things you have to go and undo the constraint and then redo it so it could be uh, could be kind of uh, uh, you know uh, not not as straight. And this is where uh, a lot of the classical animators that they come to computer animation they they just have a lot of you know a hard time transitioning to these things because they can just draw in one frame the uh, let me just jump here, don't save, jump to another frame. <laughs> they can draw uh, in one frame. The hand like like that so the hand is open like that and then the sphere would be here and then on the, ne on the next frame they can actually draw them both so now the uh the hand is here the sphere uh, is there so now they can actually switch between both frames like that so classical animation is really easy but computer animation has those glitches or let's say uh it's more like a workflow they call them glitches but it's more like a workflow that's the way it is so again let's let's just do this thing and um, i'll show you first again the hard way and then the easy way of doing things so the hard way is going to that frame making sure the sphere is going to be in a nice position like that i would just do it maybe like this because now the hand it'll be like that so it's kind of kind of like uh, setting up the scene and then just grabbing whatever you need to grab and it's usually the grist for this case we, we grab the grist and then we parent it or we constrain parent to that frame so we go to the frame grab the grist grab the sphere and then constrain parent like that and that was frame seven you need to take notes of all this so frame seven and now you go to the outliner so you can see what you're doing here you have that constraint right there and now if you if you if you see that we have no uh, blending control which is the the visibility or the, the the switch right there if i grab now the joints and let me just get rid of the geometry right there if I grab the joint right there, I don't have anything to keyframe yet. When I set the first keyframe, that's when things are getting now to work. Let me just go back to that geometry. 
um, like that. And I set the keyframe first, and now you can see that this one right there appears. And it's pretty simple. One would be on, zero would be off. So go to the frame that you want, and now this one in that frame, if I go back to shaded view, this one would be on, like that. Make sure you keyframe it so you can highlight it and then go key select it. Then the frame before, we, uh, we let it go. As, as simple as that, so, and then keyframe it. So now if I zoom out, I have my hat, now it's anticipating, and then grabs it like that. And then we get to animate the fingers so it's, it's a better feeling right there. So let me just do something uh, here temporary, but it's gonna be really useful. So we can see the example right there. So I can go with my three fingers right here, go to frame one. Okay, so this one, I'm just positioning the fingers right here. Uh, it's a really uh, basic model. We don't have any uh, set for this one. So uh, just, just bear with me as I'm doing this. But it's, it's, it's good to see. So now I grab them all like that and then keyframe it like so. And then once it goes to the anticipation, I can open them up. Let's see if I can do them all. Sometimes the axes are not facing the uh, like now. It's gonna do that and then make them go out like that just a little bit. So again, just keyframe them. It's important to keyframe them all. Like that, you can see that you can be really quick with Maya. Once you get the hang uh, of it, you know, just going and then grabbing the ball right there, that's a, that's a good keyframe. Uh, actually, the frame before, I'm gonna leave them open and then the frame after here, make sure that everything is making contact. And this is why you need to uh, be sure of that frame, the contact frame, because if not, chances are that uh, if this is not set up uh, properly, you need to undo that constraint and uh, redo it again. And again, this is a very simple scene, but when you get into more complicated stuff, you know, it's hard to un undo constraints. It's not something that you wanna be doing. You wanna be like precise, really precise. And uh, you know, just optimize the, the workflow. So now I uh, position that, all those fingers and then keyframe them. So grab them all really quick like that. Uh, we actually would look into things for keyframing all that in, in the following classes. And I still have one that is going through. So I will fix that because I don't like that. And then you guys would not like it as well. Yeah, something like that. So now you can see this is getting to be uh, more obvious about grabbing the ball like that. And then of course you need to release it at some point and then you just undo the constraint or actually you let it go, sorry. Uh, you let go the constraint by grabbing the sphere and then this is the switch that you want. And the cool thing about that is that everything that is keyframable, you can see it on the curves uh, or dope sheet or whatever you like the most, you can see it right there. So if I go here, I have on the curves, I have the blend parent and it is only one frame from one frame to the next one. And that's one thing about constraints. Uh, we usually have them from one frame to the next one. You can make the transition larger if you want. If, uh, if this one's happening from frame six to seven, I can say, okay, let's just happen uh, or make this happen from frame you know, four. I can go here from frame four to uh, frame seven. But you can see how you are giving the computer some power over that and, it, and you start getting things like the, the ball is moving be before it should be moving. So that should not really be happening. And you want to leave as little control as you, as you want or as you can to the computer. Just one frame and you can see that this works. Now the, um, the uh, disadvantage for this process is that if um, I want to make some changes to that, either by me saying, well, you know, I don't like that, let's just change it. Or I get notes from the supervisor saying, well, you know, Mario, the ball is not in the proper position, should be like somewhere maybe close to the, to the forearm. I can't really do anything about it because now it's constrained. If I, if I move it like that, and then I keyframe it, you know, it's gonna snap back to that position. 
and now I have that jump and again it's a it's a it's a simple scene that I have here but when you have a more complex scene that could be a nightmare so I cannot do it there's I can't really play with these ones now because as you can see they're they're all green meaning that there's a connection right there that, uh, that uh, the computer or the constraint it is controlling that and I cannot do it by hand anymore so the only way to fix it, it is undoing that and then redoing it again. But I will show you a different way of setting this up so you can have something simpler. Uh, so one thing that I need to go and, and, and do now is just delete the, the constraint. We'll start over again. We just leave the hand animation with the finger animation right there. And uh, go back to the three views right there. And uh, one thing that I want to have is to bring one of those locators bring it uh, get it going like this and if i want to get it right in the center of the sphere it is kind of hard because i need to eyeball it see like if i go to the front view and i go to wireframe and i try to put that in the uh, center and then just kind of go like that and then go from the top view we can use one of the constraints to do it. So I can go sphere, it's a control object, go to the, uh, pick the locator and then go constraint point. So now it's, just, it's snapping the locator to that position. I don't need that constraint anymore. It was only for aligning purposes. So I let it go, it is there. Now, here's my trick or the animator's trick. It's not mine actually, uh, somebody. Uh, taught me that in the studio. So we uh, we grab the sphere and, and, and then the locator and make them um, a hierarchy right there. You can see it right here. So now the locator is a parent of the sphere. So now the sphere, we can actually move it. Let me actually delete all the animation that the sphere has so I don't get confused with that. Um, so now I can move the locator I can move the sphere independently. So now my, my parent constraint, it'll be not to the sphere straight, but it is going to be to the locator. Remember locators, we can use them for this type of connections. They're bridges. They're not going to be rendered. We can't really see them. They don't take any memory. So they have been created for things like this ones. So now I go back to my uh, grist bones go there and uh, grab now the locator because that's in between and go to that same frame if it was frame 7 I can go constraint parent constraint now it's constraint if I go to the locator and I keyframe it once I will see now that Maya gives me that new attribute right there and uh, on this frame, I want the constraint to be on. Keyframe it, right click keyframe it, frame six. I don't want the constraint to be on, so go zero, puts it off, select it, and then key it. So now the cool thing about this, that it has the same thing as the other one. It looks the same, but it's not the same. The cool thing about this is that if I get notes and then they say, you know what, the ball or the object you're selecting or you're grabbing is not in the proper position. So now I can, I can move it. I can say, okay, how about this? How about that? And since it's not really constrained uh, directly, but it's a child of the locator, I can do it. You know, I can even have it like that. If, you know, if that was a note, it pushes it like that. And isn't that cool? See, I have to confess, I didn't know that until a couple of uh, years ago. So I was always undoing the constraint and then re-constraining. And then I was like, oh my gosh, the position is broken. Undo the constraint, redo it again. And uh, until somebody said, well, just do it like this. So this is the way we do it now, or I do it now. And this is the way you should do it now, because now you see the, uh, the hard way and the easy way. You have seen uh, it's a combination of a lot of things but mainly would be the constraints and the constraints that we use is the parent constraint you're going to be using that quite often especially in the in the, uh, in the scenes that we have 
the character is interacting with something. It's pretty much about interaction. With could be a prop in their hands, or could be uh, some sort of interaction with the set. With, with those constraints, play with them. Go to the option boxes. They're pretty self-explanatory. We don't use them as much. We just animate it. We just constrain. And, and do simple things. If we need something more elaborated, uh, the uh, TDs would do it for us, pretty much. But again, just understand the concept, play with it, do some tests, break it, redo it, and then get confident with it. Thank you. go to the uh, uh, gimbal right there and just try to see which one's the axis that makes the model. As you can see, this model is not really working. My gosh, if you can repeat that, would be nice. <laughs> ah, okay.